so now we have a very special treat. Are you ready to kick it up? Yeah. All right, we're going to help you do that. And first up, we, we're featuring Movement 515, which is an amazing program for students to express their feelings and their rights and their issues through the arts. Sound good? Yeah. Some of you doing that also? Yeah, yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear it for the arts. OK, everybody, come on. Yeah. First up, please give a warm welcome to Devon Walker from Lincoln High School. Come on, Devon. All right. Let's just stand back here. In the middle of United States history class, I learned that in 2018, the book still referred to native populations as Indians. I bring this up and a colonizer tells me it's convenient. Convenient as killing off a continent's worth of culture. I told him that he doesn't care because he benefits from it. And he says, don't you too? I stand confounded. Do I, if I am a citizen of the United States, do I not benefit from its history? And I, in short answer, yes. In any job you may start, there are some benefits you may immediately receive. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But what the employers pretend to forget is that on the contract there is an asterisk next to them, a whites only clause written in white ink on white paper, but is still plain as day. If you have skin like night, your rights are non-existent. So when I was born into this country, my rights have been compromised crippled, colonized. So when I am told I have the right to life, I know that it only applies to those who are white because there have been too many black boys servicing this assembly line that have had their positions terminated without a worker's compensation or a killer's conviction. And what is liberty to me when the pen I use to sign my paper seems to only spell poverty or penitentiary? I know that spelling tests are used to determine how many places are made and proprietors made for profit prisons. And if I want to pursue happiness, I'm told not to protest, but to refer to HR. But what is human relations to me when the only humans y'all can relate to in this country are colored like cotton? Cotton. The first job my people held in this corporate capitalistic country. You capitalized on my countrymen's bodies for your corporation, making slavery your free market economy. Common sense can tell you those two things don't mix, but it sure made your business model flourish. Finesse your finances into the far-reaching federation it is today. But today, I have a new proposal. My people, we must push through this persecution guised as patriotism. We must unionize to combat our demise. We must always rise or sit or kneel when necessary, because when we do, we become a mirror, reflecting how many times they've broken their own code of conduct. Make your tongue conduct lightning when you speak. Don't care if you shock them with your hair. It grows up, symbolizing our call to glory, our call to skyscrapers in high places, erasing the hate that permeates this state. We be more CEO than enemy of 5 -0 more chairman than chained man. Our skin is bronze, but our hearts are gold. So no matter our position or our salary, whether we fall or rise, dead or alive, our net worth remains priceless. This is a country claimed by a couple of fed up British citizens. America, remember your forefathers cause you'll never know who you are till you know where you come from. Europe, Britain, Italy, remember your immigrants. Remember the pilgrims on whose prayers you survived that brutal winter you were once religious. You left home due to persecution. You left home because they said you can defile with their beliefs. And today, you push back on Muslims like you pushed out natives, betraying Jews like you didn't share the same Bible stories. This is not your promised land. If anything, this land is religious. It's sacred. This land is black and brown, then it is white. You can't claim the soil that doesn't compose of your ancestors' blood and sweat. Show me white, and I will show you snow. 
cold, cruel, cunning, controlling colonists. White is the color of a fading identity of former immigrants, bleached of compassion, grabbing land and men by their freedom, Chicanos. Never knew of immigration till this American border crossed into their nation, Africa. Never knew of chain migration till they chained us across nations, tortured and tormented us till we built underground trains. So today we move, we migrate to wherever hope and freedom awaits, but immigration was America's backbone back when human exploitation was considered innovation, this economy was grown from black cotton fields, railroads of Asians, factories and farms of Latinos. So this land belongs to immigrants, belongs to runners, belongs to nomads of the native tribes. So immigrants will not stop fleeing. They would rather die trying, traveling to find a better tomorrow. And America owes them a tomorrow. America is a college of dreamers, a rainbow of skin colors. America is not one race. America is the finish line of all who raced to get here. America, you are an immigrant. They are big, brown, and beautiful, legs long as ladders and powerful muscles with sharp night vision and an excellent sense of smell. They hear better than a black mom when you mumble under your breath. Their skin be a blanket of camouflage and woods of timber with a buck as a dad and a doe as a mom, bonds learn how to walk at birth. Like as soon as they part lips, they're left to live alone. They have to grow up fast. They only stay with their mom for one to two years and they're on their own. With the whole world to swallow them, families are split so they travel in groups called herds, kind of like gangs. Their dad does not help stay to raise them so the streets do instead. It seems like everyone wants these deer dead. But I guess when the government feeds off your insides, a gun is the best way to feast our four time estates. I, for one, enjoy the joy and the exhilaration of reverting to my primal instincts of actual killing. And ain't that crazy? They telling me they find joy in our grief. On August 2nd and 3rd, a tractor trailer was filled with Nike shoes in Inglewood, Chicago. You see, authorities claim that it would lure in would-be thieves. They arrested these men for stealing, planted merchandise in low-income neighborhoods where basic necessities are scarce. There is no home in the forest. No wonder they are becoming extinct. They want to kill us off, like deer in forest, like deer head mounted on wall, like, like George Zimmerman signing Skittle packets. They want to remember the hunt, want to remember the way the sky bathed in black blood and black bodies scattered under bullets like roaches. You make beast in black boy, like their skin tastes like deer meat. Like their flesh be fiber or fat and leave their souls left to wander in the skies. Well, maybe that's why you label them criminals. You want to lock us up, put bars on our bodies as if it could break our breed. But blackness be more than body, be more than beast or bullet. No matter how many of them you shoot, when will you realize that we still exist? We will survive this forest. Eric Garner couldn't breathe, yet we still fight. We still find the oxygen, still get off the hen, still celebrate with bottles on birthdays because it's another year that we made it out alive and ain't that crazy? You people cannot, you cannot break my breed. Thank you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this thing on? Jazzy, thank you. Can you all come up? Okay. And so we are so happy today that we're going to have some students from Decorah, Iowa, who did a National History Day program about that. So please welcome Lauren Johnson and Grace Gerleman. Come on up, you two. 
Yeah. All right. My name is Grace Grilliman, and this is Lauren Johnson. And we are students from Decorah High School. We're here to talk about our experience with our National History Day project. When choosing our topic, we wanted to focus on activists in history that truly made a difference throughout communities in Iowa. And that's when we found Edna Griffin. Edna Griffin was a brave woman who fought for the equal rights of all organizations and races. She took action for injustice. Her most significant impact was her work with the Katz Drug Store. On July 7, 1948, Griffin was denied service at Katz Drug Store on the grounds of her race. She filed a lawsuit against Katz and took her case all the way to the Iowa Supreme Court, where the court would rule in her favor. She helped establish laws that made it illegal to deny service based on race. We wrote a play to present our information. We have two other people who helped us perform this play that aren't able to be with us today, Ruby Sullivan and Larson Shockey. In our play, we focused reenacting the conflict at Katz Drug Store and the civil trial. Our performance advanced to state contest where we won two awards, the African American History Award and the Leroy G. Pratt Award. We were also lucky enough to perform our play at the Edna Griffin Legacy Awards and Celebration Dinner last summer. While in Des Moines, we visited the Edna Griffin Building, which was once Katz Drug Store. Edna Griffin truly inspired us. She used her rights and the law to make the city of Des Moines a better place for everyone. When we look at our lives, we want to continue Edna Griffin's legacy. Maybe that's by standing up for injustice we see around us or something as simple as showing respect and acceptance. The play really helped us speak out about what we see around us that we don't agree with. The celebration dinner really highlighted Edna Griffin's legacy. We chose Edna Griffin and hope to share her story and the important work she accomplished. Edna Griffin is an example in our lives. She stood up for her, the rights of others, so why can't we? Changing society is a lifelong journey we're all responsible for. Help me welcome Stanley Griffin, Edna Griffin's son. All right. Yeah. Woo uh, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here today. And I'm pretty touched by that speech. I mean, it's like, that's what mother really wanted, wanted kids. She wanted to leave a legacy of what is right, human and civil, in the area of human and civil rights. And they were talking about her accomplishments with the Katz drug, uh, drug store case, but I want you to know, you know, who was my mother? Number one, she was the number one uh, mother in the world to myself. She, she definitely was my accompanist. I played cello through school. She, she was my accompanist on that. She was standing up for union rights in Iowa. She got here in 1947, and she stood up, uh, she stood up for the meat packers, uh, workers, <clears throat> to try to organize them in 1947. The work I want you to know that she did back then, she foreshadowed the modern uh, civil rights movement as you know it today. And I look back and I say, my mother was very bold. I mean, she's a, a force in action, and I think she wants to transfer that to all of you kids. Mm -hmm. Everybody can make a difference in terms of what happens. Uh, she helped with farm organization. I also grew up with farmers from Newman Grove, Nebraska, and she helped them organize a, a case against uh, Safeway stores. And I just want to let you know, she was more than just one being. She was very complicated and brilliant. And, uh, uh, Graduated from high school at 14 years old and moved on from there and dedicated her life to civil and human rights, gay rights, the works, and I stand proud uh, to represent the Griffin family. And one other thing, my dad, Dr. Stanley Griffin, was the foundation of our family without him being a, uh, a, a sole pro uh, working for himself. Mother could not do what she did because she, uh, we would have got fired and not had, you know, not had any employment. So stand up for what is right and always remember my mother. And one last thing, a little plug here. If you want to learn more about uh, mom right now, go to Edna Griffin, uh, Edna Griffin, Iowa. And if you, you Google that, you're going to get a lot of hits on her. And uh, mm. we're writing a book right now, so there's going to be a lot more about it. And we want to help kids just like you and others excel. 
white, black, everybody do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. special treat. We have two students who are using their First Amendment rights to speak up about the things that they care about. And one of them is Jenny Wynn from North High School. So come on up, Jenny. From North. Now, North is my old high school. Yeah, so that's welcome. right. That's right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jenny Nguyen. I am a senior and class president at Des Moines North High School. 50 years ago, the Tinkers not only stood up for their rights, but also for people across the nation. And that changed our lives forever. Because of your courageousness, we are able to express ourselves in what we wear, write, and say. Today, I woke up not being afraid. Not being afraid of going to school and expressing my ideas. I am glad to say that many kids today are not afraid to speak their minds. They know how to use their voice. But if it was 50 years ago, students would be expelled or suspended for speaking up for their rights. That all changed because of the Tinkers, so thank you. I want to tell you about something powerful that happened at North High School. A couple years ago, recent political issues at the time motivated student leaders to organize a walkout during school to protest. Mm -hmm. Signs were made by multiple students and everyone was united as one. I participated because I know that my voice matters. And if I did not like something, I will speak up. Mm -hmm. Today, our generation are exposed to a lot more opportunities to express ourselves. From after school programs such as Movement 515, to art classes, and let's take journalism for example. We have a great newspaper team here at North High, the Oracle. Students get to create their own pages and design how they like and write about what they believe in. Some of the topics that have been covered in our newspaper range from women to LGBTQ rights. These topics are usually really sensitive, but the newspaper provides a platform to express ourselves. We are young, and because we are young, people think we don't matter, and our opinions don't matter. But we do matter. We are the leaders of the next generation. So thank you to the Tinkers for standing up and letting us have the freedom of speech we get today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that, Jenny. And now we're going to hear from Rebecca Schneid from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Thank you, Rebecca. Hi, my name is Rebecca Schneid. And as Mary Beth just said, I am uh, the editor in chief of The Eagle Eye, which is the newspaper at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. And if you didn't know, which I'm sure most of you do, that last year on February 14th, it was the site of a shooting which killed 17 people. But I don't think that that's what Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School is, is all it's known for now. We're not known as a school of victims. We're known as a school of fighters. Fighters who understood our rights, our First Amendment rights, to speak up for what we believe in. And not only that, but we were determined and perseverant to advocate for the rights that we believe that we deserved, our right to live. And I think that if you're gonna take anything from today, it should be that it doesn't, ma it doesn't matter your age. We were 14, 15, 16, 17. Um, if you are old enough to be affected by the ills of society, you're old enough to have a say in it. And you're old enough to speak up for it and, speak and stand up for what you believe in. And I have not just seen that as the survivor of a school shooting, I have seen that as a student journalist. Before February 14th and after February 14th, I wrote about stories that were important to me and important to my classmates, whether they be uh, LGBTQ plus issues, whether they be gun violence at our school or gun violence in the other cities and on the streets, um, or rape culture, diversity, and each of these are just as important as the other. And if any of these issues or anything else is important to you, I encourage you to stand up for your rights and to also speak up for them, write about them, because I have seen that student press and student voices are the most important thing in this country right now. And they are the things that are keeping us together, and they are the things that are holding politicians and everyone else accountable for their actions. Mm -hmm. So whatever that you believe in, whether that be like any of the issues that I said or something else, write about them, speak about them, and affect change. Thank you. Thank you. 